I'll start this video with a flicker warning just in case. And I'll tell you before I turn these on, it's just in case the camera catches the flicker off these. So the, this is a set of uh, little festoon lamps, and I was inspired to buy this by Electroboom, who took a dead one of the lamps apart, and I think it was just a resistor inside. If it is, I want to see if this is a bipolar uh, LED filament. I shall plug this in, and we can see if it flickers or not. Plugging in now. It's not flickering the camera, that's good. So these are pretty bright. They're quite impressive little lights for half watt. Uh, visually, to the human eye, they don't look too flickery. The power consumption of the whole string of 30 lamps is 22 watts, 90 milliamps, so it's about 3 milliamps per light. And the power factor is staggeringly good at 0.978, which pretty much indicates that uh, it is just a resistor in these. Right, I'll get the hockey out there because it's the, it's the bit that is doing the flickering. So it's quite odd to see such a small base in the UK. The smallest base we normally use is E14, small Edison screw. We don't tend to use the smaller ones for anything other than night lights because ultimately with 240 volts, uh, you need a little bit more clearance in the base and the really tiny bases can uh, cause problems with that. And I'm thinking, I've never really seen this fistoon used outdoors in the UK much. It's always a sort of bigger fistoon. So I'm wondering if... Uh, how this is going to hold up, and I see local cafes using this outside with a section that they've been taking all the dead lamps out and they've been putting into a section that's out of sight. But um, certainly in the UK, there's these holders, while well, very common in America for Christmas lighting. If I look into the end of this, I can see, I don't know if you're going to see it, I shall try pointing a light up from underneath. Yeah. Do you see the flashlight? shining through in there, those holes. There are vent holes through. This stuff is not waterproof. I wonder how well it's going to hold up in it with water and grass. But anyway, I guess we'll find out uh, with people using them because they seem to be commonly shipped from China these days. But this is a parallel string. Every single cap is punched on. They have kept the polarity right. It is the live contact is going to the back contact. And when you get to the end, you can just cascade them and add more in series. Uh, basically another parallel string. Um, and each lamp then is just 240 volt. So this is intriguing. I really want to take this apart. I'm going to put a glove on because it is glass and people tend to get agitated when I, I don't. So I'm going to put a glove on. Port West mechanic style glove. And I'm going to get my schnips. Where's the schnips? It's not that. I don't want that. It's not that. I need, I need to organise my tool better. And let's start nibbling away, so let's just get the end off. I'm going to destroy one of these lamps, there's a couple spear anyway. And ultimately I don't see myself using this. I have a bit of fistoon outside, but it is the E27 type. Crunchy. Mmm, crunchy. I'm in I can see a resistor. It looks like a quarter watt resistor. I hope it's not. That would be miserable. Particularly if it's given it's dissipating most of the power, I think. Yeah, it really is just a resistor. That's all. How bizarre. So I shall zoom up in this. The resistor has the colour banding. Green, brown, orange. 51k. Let's double check that. I shall get the glove off for extra nimbleness. I shall get the meter in. Put it up to 200. And I shall probe that resistor in situ. And then I'm going to strip this off and I'm going to hook some probes on. I'm going to solder some leads on probably. So let's see if I can get hold of that, if I can get in there. Is it 51? Yes, it is. Oh, hold on. I shall just nudge this in. Yes, it is. 51k. Right, that's interesting. Right, time to do some computations and measure the voltage across that filament. Is that an AC filament? That would be interesting. Right, I'm just going to go and do that right now. One moment, please. Okay, time to do some tests. I've connected the neutral onto the remainder of the shell in the lamp, the live onto the end of the resistor, 
and I've connected a wee orange tap off between the resistor and the LED. And if I plug this in there, you'll see the meter just show a slight reading just through capacitive coupling to me, fundamentally, through the lead. If I touch this to um, the neutral in here, this is why I'm using the hobby here. Uh, incidentally, 0.7 watts, 3 milliamps and 0.757 power factor with just one lamp on its own. It shows 110 volts across the LEDs. If I put it to the other side, it shows approximately 137 volts across the resistor at those 3 milliamps. So 137 137 on the kink calculator times 0 0.003 gives a dissipation of that resistor of 0.4 watts. I would say that resistor is actually rated quarter watt and it's probably just pushing it a bit hard. That is the bit that will fail, just like Electroboom found it did fail. Uh, the Looking back at that uh, LED voltage, do you know what? I've suddenly realised something. If this is the voltage across the LED is about 110 volts, you could probably run these in 120 volts, these 240, 220 to 240 volt lamps, and they would be a lot dimmer, but they'd just last forever. However, uh, experiment. I tried a diode in series. Let me just unplug this and put that diode in series. Where is my diode? I have misplaced my diode. There it is. And I wondered if the light was only lighting half wave, but it didn't look it didn't look very flickery. So here's a diode. And I shall twist this wire around, plug it in, and you immediately see that flickering. It is actually lighting on both halves of the waveform. I'm not sure if they've got a little rectifier built into the filament or if they've just got a two it would make sense to do that, but I'm not sure how they'd achieve that in the circuit board. Because it'd kind of require it would require a connection running from one end to the other to do that. But it looks like a long series string of LEDs. It was about 110 volts. And if you consider that uh, the typical forward voltage of an LED at that low current is, say, 110 volts divided by 2.8 equals about 39 LEDs. Did I get that right? It just seems 110 divided by 2.8 volts, say, uh, yeah, about 39 LEDs. Or are there eight LEDs configured as a sort of alternating in reverse parallel? That's very strange. So the next thing I'd like to try is to doobie the whole string. I don't think it's really pushing the resistors too hard in that. I don't think it's really grilling them, although the 0.4 watt is well above the, 200, the 0.25 watt rating. Um, but it makes me think that if you nudge the voltage down to this string, having seen the local uh, cafe with uh, all the dead lamps and their string tucked out the way, it makes me wonder if this is going to make a difference in how long that lasts. Right, tell you what, I'm going to set that up. I'll be back in one moment. OK, let's begin the doobie test. I have the doobie tester here with just a wire link in initially. I'll plug the lights in. This is them at their full output. Uh, fairly bright. Uh, 21 watts, about 90 milliamps as before. Now I'm going to go straight to one microfarad. So I'm going to unplug this. I'm going to pop out the link. So was that about, uh, what was that power? I've just forgotten what that was. Just want to refresh myself here. Say 21 watts. Okay, what's it going to drop to with a one microfarad capacitor in series? Here is the capacitor. I shall pop it in. And we shall plug it in and see what it drops to. Still fairly bright, but they have dropped in brightness. It's over half to actually. It's down to 9 watts. Uh, 51 milliamps. So 9 watts divided by the 30 lamps, that's roughly a third of a watt. So they've actually pretty much halved in power. Um, and that is going to take a lot of strain off that resistor. It still looks very bright, still looks okay. If you're running lots in a, a connected together in parallel with this little connector, which incidentally is missing its end cap, uh, then maybe that would uh, 
you'd could maybe ha use a higher value capacitor. You'd have to use a little discharge resistor across this. It's worth mentioning, typically one meg ohm. But the voltage being dropped across that isn't terribly high. Let me just uh, let me grab the meter in here, wedge it in at an angle, and then just probe that capacitor for the AC voltage that has been dropped across it. It's about 160 volts. It's not that much. But there we go. Interesting stuff. So these lamps, you don't really see them an awful lot in the UK in the sense that these holders are just that wee bit too small for our sort of 240 volt supply. I just don't have a lot of confidence in them in a wet environment versus the 120 volts of America. Do you guys in America have problems with the lamp holders burning up inside? Certainly we've had problems even with the E27, the fairly big uh, screw-in lamps. I'm just trying to see if I've got an example of that here. No, I've not. That, that kind of fits. Yeah, that one. Uh, this, we even have problems with the water getting in and causing problems with those. But there we go. Interesting. So if you have a set of these and it's killing lamps on a regular basis, stick a one microfarad capacitor in series with a one mega ohm discharge resistor across it, sleeve it up well, put it somewhere safe, and it should actually save the life expectancy of these lamps and make them last a lot longer. But it will make them a little bit dimmer, but they will just last longer, which is probably a better thing than if the, particularly if they're failing on a regular basis.